live or did you? Oh, I can hit go live on OBS. There we go. Actually, we're live now. (laughs) All right. Sorry. No, you're good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Futsal News Live, the watch party edition. We are here. We're going to watch USA versus Dominican Republic. Guatemala just coming out of a victory. They will be, uh, they were topping the group at the moment. Uh, they beat Trinidad 5-3, to three, came from behind from 2-0 down at halftime and just absolutely controlled that second half. So uh, let's see what the U.S. can muster here against a very tough Dominican side. Luke, how's it going? It's going good, man. It's going good. Just running like crazy, you know, being a dad, going to kids' soccer games, watching the watching the CONCACAF championship, you know, <laughs> living the dream. It's a good weekend. It's a good weekend. It's a good weekend. <laughs> Beautiful weather. I guess you guys got beautiful weather too. It's beautiful out here in Idaho. It's beautiful in Ohio. Oh yeah. My house is a mess, but I spent the uh, morning on the porch because it was like, I was way too nice not to do a little sunbathing. Right. <laughs> Made fetch with the dog. Enjoyed it. It was good. I'm trying to see if I can pull up my resources from yesterday. I had the rosters and stuff. I am going to turn down our... Uh feed just a little bit it's a little bit loud for me is that okay with you yeah for sure oh yeah that's good is that yeah, bad I had your mind about halfway down yeah okay. i was i couldn't hear you <laughs> i was like oh so i'm struggling <laughs> with because i'm casting that game and then i it's it's a mess Here's the rosters. Okay. If you have that link, can you uh, hit it over to me? Yeah, for sure. All right. Sent over to you. Hey, there's our boy, Robbie. Yes. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's a PDF. Oh, okay. Why? Oh. It wants to open it up, and oh man. Oh yeah, mine opened up in the in the browser, but I didn't think about that. If you have the no, it's all good. Uh, I'll just drag this over here. Where can you watch the way the game? Uh, Dr. So you can watch the game. Uh, it depends on where you are in the world, but um, Concacaf is streaming it on their YouTube channel. But some countries here in uh, within the region are geoblocked. So the United States is geoblocked from seeing this on YouTube. So we're watching it on a VPN, uh, running it through another country so we can watch it. Uh, supposedly Fox has the rights to this game, these games in the U.S., but I don't know. Nobody seems to know exactly where that's being aired. And uh, uh, in other countries, there's, there's several resources as well. You're in USA? Okay, yeah. So you would... If you don't have probably the extended uh, cable options of some of the Fox networks, your best bet is probably to go on uh, Tubi, T-U-B-I, or you can uh, use a VPN. Uh, Express, Nord, uh, Speedify, all great resources for VPNs you can use. Just run your IP address through those through another country. And I think even Mexico, right, Luke? We were testing out yesterday. Mexico yeah, with it I'm on Mexico right now. I was on Brazil before, but this is a, a Mexico-based server. Yeah, so there's there's a few resources you can use to get to it. And, and setting up that IP is very, very simple once you download those VPNs, DR. Cool. I was getting my uh, comment thing going <laughs> Jose Perez for uh, the Dominican uh, actually played for London Helvetia before they folded. Did he really? Yeah, That's if you guys remember us talking the rants. Yeah, and now he's uh, playing for Bloomsbury Futsal, who are the defending champs in England. Um, nice. And I believe he's their starter. And then their backup keeper there is also at, playing in England at York Futsal. And uh, York gives him plenty of practice in between the pipes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> 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 that's the nice way to put it all love all love <laughs> all love, all love. Friends. Uh, 
So if you guys missed the first game, Guatemala did win five to three. They were down two nothing at halftime, and uh, Trinidad just couldn't quite keep the pace going to uh, to see that game through. So uh, unfortunate. Could have gotten some help from Trinidad to kind of give us some room for error, but we're not going to get it. So uh, going to have to work through this. Dominican looked really good against Guatemala yesterday, even though they did not win. They looked really strong. So I'm curious to see how U.S. holds up. I think it's going to be a very tough game for the United States. Diego. Uh, Jake, do you know the final score of the Guatemala Trinidad game? Uh, yeah, it was five to three. Update our scoreboard here. Luke, how do you think things are going to go for us today? You know, I'm interested. I'm interested to see now that we got our pregame jitters out, um, if USA can actually put together a solid performance against uh, against the Dominican Republic. Uh, like I said, USA, it, it's not that I, I, I am judging on, you know, performances or anything. USA has to be better than everybody in CONCACAF. That's just what it has to be. That's going to be my expectation. I won't back down from that. And that's the only thing I'll take. So the, the, I need to see a dominant performance from USA today. And this has nothing to do with this tournament. This has everything to do with the U.S. program and where it's headed. Yeah, big time. I mean, uh, definitely, I think the United States was very fortunate to play against a uh, weaker side to start the tournament in, yeah. um, in Trinidad. Because those early game jitters were pretty rough Very uh, lucky. They did, even though they won yesterday they did not look convincing to me um and dominican is going to play with a uh, much more uh aggressive play on defense as you can see they're already pressing high mm -hmm. uh and they did a lot of that against guatemala yesterday as well and they didn't let up throughout the game they didn't get tired from that so uh it's gonna take something it's gonna take a better gonna take a better result uh as a team from this u.s side if they want to stay in the running here 100%. 100%. An interesting, interesting that Moretti called it. An interesting, yeah, interesting shot for Moretti. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. That's weird. It was strange. <laughs> Seemed dangerous to me, but. Okay, hopefully my uh, I added today's scores into our ticker. Hopefully those come through. So Jake, someone I saw someone in chat the other day on in the USA game talking about some of the one of the players uh, playing for Empire. I, I I didn't remember the comment exactly, but what what was the 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 thought shared there? Uh, for Empire, I don't remember the that. the indoor team. I thought they played. They were the were someone in the chat saying they watched a player from US. Um, uh, there were some there were some folks in the chat that follow Utica City. Utica, not Empire. Utica. Yeah, Utica. So there's I think three players from Utica. Okay. Playing the. Well, it makes sense. I mean, <laughs> the coach coaches there, so you know. Yeah. Right. Right. So I think uh, Nicholas Lopez, Luciano Gonzalez, uh, Robert, and um, Diego are the only players on this team that actually play futsal. The rest are all arena soccer players, as far as I'm aware. So 
that's another big problem for me as well. I think with our with our team is we definitely look like indoor soccer good. players playing futsal again, like the old days. Yep, it's, it's a real shame. Now, question, Jake, for you. I don't know if you remember uh, who was the guy that got drafted this year into MASL from I think it was Colorado or. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, somebody got drafted to the Harrisburg Heat. Um, I can't remember who that is, but they did make the jump from NFPL to Arena Soccer. It's a great save by Moretti. Yeah, Moretti's so good. He's so good. That wasn't oh, good. That wasn't good though. Yikes! <laughs> as soon as we compliment him, Jeez. as soon as we compliment him, that's unfortunate. This is what I'm talking about, though. I mean, the U.S., they're playing like they're playing arena soccer. They're not playing at the correct pace. They're not playing in the Watch correct the formations. Pressure. Watch the pressure in replay. Look at that positioning. How can you? How do you not be on the back post? How are you not? All four of them stacked up in front. No one on the back post. How do you score all you know, futsal they, goals? Back post? So they lined up in a futsal defense in the Y for that corner kick. But the Y was completely out of shape. Like the guy yeah. should be more back post and the, the middle Y should be where the back of the Y was in that formation. Sloppy giveaway. And then what is that? Who are you kicking that to? This is the stuff. There's no walls to let you bounce off and catch us at the end of the court. Why are we booting the ball? Mm -hmm. Man. I mean, it's still early, but goodness sakes. I'm going to be highly critical. I won't, I won't write them off, but I am highly critical of this team. Me too. I, I can't help it. I, I want to be, I, I want to be able to cheer for these guys, obviously. And, and I, I want the USA to win when, if they win, I will give them, Ooh, that's a nice shot off the post. I mean, they're, they're clearly missing guys like Jeremy Kleppel who actually know this game. Yes. Here's the rough part is that I see run of play shots. And if you know anything about futsal, run of play does happen, but the main thing you're shooting for is that ball across goal with the back post happen. It's just, yep. that's futsal. And I don't see them attempting that or setting up for that or even going after it. Right. The movement doesn't indicate to me that that's what they want to do. <laughs> Lots of standing around, slow. Pass and move, pass and move. This is futsal. The three are just set standing in the back. <sighs> Even our futsal players are doing it. Luciano's just, I mean. They're playing that Piva. They're playing that Piva. Almost like he knows he's going to have to come back on it. it. It's what we talked about against Trinidad. These guys are playing with zero confidence. They look like they are afraid to be there. They're scared to get countered. That's why yeah. they play three in the back static. They're scared on the, of the transition game. Wow. That's a goal. There it is. There it is. This is an absolute shocking performance. I've been saying it for months. I've been saying it since Dushan was let go. This team will take a step back. 100%. You guys can check my receipts in the in the videos I've done. <laughs> I've said it from the beginning. I've said it on these live streams. This is a step back for U.S. football. This is embarrassing. Sorry about we the should, score update there, guys. It's 2-0, two 2-0. Zero, two zero. We should be in this game, even though I think the Dominican Republic is better than us. Uh, we should be better than this. We should be in the game. It should be close. Yeah. Hewerton, buddy. As you can see, Dominican Republic coming with a really up tempo, really high pace. US flat. US looking like they want to ease their way into this, and Dominican Republic are jumping all over that and slapping the US. Well, and that's what you do, all right? You wait for that moment of weakness and you pounce. That's what it's all about. And we are giving them so many moments to play, play off of, and to do that. What I are two? Uh, what's the guy doing? That back post run on that bobble was inexcusable. The defender was standing there just watching him run in. 
I'm not a fan of this Pivo setup. I don't think it's working. I think it's too slow. I think it's old. I think we're playing in the 90s here. Wow. Jake, did I lose you or are you just uh, writing? Oh, no, sorry. Darius, uh, our friend Darius at the channel, he's watching the game too and he was texting me. So. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. I just was looking over and I'm like, is he frozen? Him join this. Put him on the spot. <laughs> Tell him, yeah, more than Mary. Darius just came back from Cyprus. He was just playing with uh, Northern Ireland trying to qualify for the Euros. Unfortunately, they did not qualify after three heartbreaking games. What an awful kick in. Man, this team. I, man, this is this is exactly what I thought it would be. Indoor soccer players playing on a court. Wrong pace, wrong strategy. It's, it's just way too dependent. They're like waiting around for the bounce off the wall. You know, that, that, that psychotic bounce off the indoor wall. Good. Come on. There we there go. We go. Great finish. Good individual effort there. Great finish. I would not be talking to the bench if I were him, though. That's the only good thing we've done all game. It's a good cut. Drop shot there. Chum. The only thing I'll give I'll give the indoor players is they do know how to shoot. They do know how to finish. It's just how you get to that moment in futsal is different. Right. Gotta figure out that positioning. Three guys up front. Mendez is feeling himself now. That's good. Yeah. Good. He's the only one playing with any real kind of confidence at the moment. Yeah, stack that foul. Yeah, call that. Oh, we should keep track of fouls too, but oh well. Uh, the Conquer Calf doesn't even do it for the broadcast. <laughs> That's true. It's ridiculous. I'm not a fan of whoever that guy is with the beard up front. Uh, yeah, nope. He needs to get out. Andrade? Andrade. Mm, not doing it for me. That's it's he's been sloppy all game. I that's I've counted three turnovers. The ideas are not good. He's weak. If you're gonna be up front and you're going to be receiving the ball with your back to goal, you better darn well be sure that you th are throwing elbows. Uh, throwing your body weight around and making it havoc up front. He looks weak. Yeah. He looks incompetent and he looks like he he's scared. I'm like, you, you put someone like, I know Sammy doesn't do it, but Sammy on Grand Rapids would that kind of attitude, that kind of flair, that kind of presence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep your arm down. Can't be mad about that. Got your elbow up past your shoulder. Well, maybe not. Camera angle made his arm look higher than it was. Hey, Coach Hergy, Andrade's out. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got to say, though, uh, so one of the few guys that's on the squad from the last rotation, uh, Junior, they're number nine. Yeah. Uh, I think we said it yesterday. I mean, he's, he's a stalwart. He's really good, but he has, like, these huge defensive lapses sometimes. He, he becomes a bit of a liability sometimes with some of his decision-making. If you're hanging out with us and you're in the chat, uh, definitely you know feel feel free to fire some questions at us. We definitely would love to yeah. uh, futsal or USA futsal or Dominican Republic futsal. We're we're a fan of it all. Our rotations are starting to look a little better here. 
Horrible touch. So riddle me this, Jake. I, I think I know what you're gonna what you're gonna tell me, but do you feel in your heart of hearts that any <laughs> NFPL players deserve a spot on this team? Um let me let me clarify. Let me clarify. For those who don't know, the NFPL is the US soccer league uh that with futsal players in it. And I'm talking about do they deserve a, a spot on the American squad? NFPL, you said? Yeah, NFPL. It's uh, the futsal league, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I feel like a couple of the guys from Brusa could keep up with this group. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, I also think a couple of guys, a couple of the young guys from Grand Rapids, have a future where they could end up on this squad. But. I'm not entirely sure how hard the NFPL is being looked at by our coaching staff. I mean, we got a guy that's a arena soccer coach and he's brought in almost entirely an arena soccer squad. I don't think he's looking outside of who he sees every week. Kind of taking the easy way out a little bit. I think surely there's guys that could perform better than some of the players we've seen so far in this tournament in a uniform. Um, I get, I know Calway's, uh, nursing an injury, but Calway on his best days definitely should be a part of this squad, in my opinion. Um, I think that uh, as well, if I don't know what Pondeka feels like about coming back to the squad. Or, you know, he seems to be pursuing outdoor, but he certainly performed a lot better than anybody that's in this squad, and his time is a, what, 18, 19-year-old three years ago. Um, and you see it on the women's side, too, don't you, Luke? I mean, uh, the couple of a couple of times we've seen uh, training camps. I think it's happened twice. Not a single player that has any kind of NFPL affiliation or any other league affiliation in the United States for that matter. Yeah, any other league. Any. I'd be curious why that is. Like, what what are those guys doing that is disqualifying them from making it even to the camps? So here's the, here's, here's the funny part. And here's the interesting part is with the advent of people like you and I not to, not to toot our own horn, but I'm, I'm stating facts here is that we've upped the, the visibility of NFPL with the streaming. So they, there's no excuse. And the film is there. It's not like he has to be there. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Go watch the don't video. Have to watch it live. You, you don't even have to be there. You want to know how your player's playing? Uh, like I said, I think so, like some of the younger kids, um, on Grand Rapids, I, I agree with you there. Um, Honestly, you could bring in someone like a uh, uh, Lito Escoval, not as a as a starter, but as a as that that presence in the locker room as a captain. Mm -hmm. And I really, really, really feel like that type of player could bring something to this squad of wisdom and of like, hey, because he I've seen him do it with Grand Rapids. He's like, guys, calm down. And he goes out there and he makes a few key passes He's like like this, and then he can come off. Like he doesn't need to play the whole game. He has a smart defensive mind as well. Um, you know, even if you don't see him involved defensively in a play, just his positioning and, like you said, him being a, a captain of the team, he's definitely a voice of uh, comfort. I feel like for his guys, you know, they feel comfortable playing with him on the court. Yeah. I don't know that he's at the technical level of a lot of these guys here. No, no. but he, the thing is, is like, you know, and I know he works his ass off the, the, the wiles of someone of that age and experience make up for a lot. And they, he brings us like different slant all of a sudden. Can he keep up the whole time? No. And, but you see teams do it again and again and again, they bring in this, this voice of reason, you know, just to, to, to shore up the locker room. Yeah, I just don't like the movement from U.S. It feels so. What? What are we? I don't know what the uh, what are we doing? nationalities are of a lot of the players in the Southwest Division, but a lot of them could certainly play at this level. I, I was going to ask you. Speaking of nationalities, is, does Kawe have a citizenship? Do you know? I think so, because didn't he represent the U.S. on the? Uh, yeah, um, but but that's yeah. enough. I just don't know how. 
yeah, AMF is kind of a relaxed some organization. That might that might not be a good comparison. Because I know he's born in Brazil. I just don't know if he has a citizenship. Handball. It's been a handball. Huh. I didn't see it. See a note from Otto here. I'm just looking through some of my notifications, and it looks like Haiti will be in action again today. So their guys must have recovered from whatever happened yesterday. I, I, what a weird, weird, bizarre thing. You know, um, I'm a real big fan of futsal rotations uh, from a substitute perspective of uh, two to three hard minutes and out, having a nice deep bench. Um, Haiti's playing at that level of play because they have to, but they have no bench. So mm -hmm. they're given a, a full 20 minutes and then to take a break and come back. Maybe uh maybe they got iced during that time and that's what caused those those major pools that they felt or whatever that kept them from playing or or what. I don't know. It's kind of bizarre that two game ending injuries happened back to back within a matter of uh the first two minutes of the half. Foul for what here? That's a clean oh. tackle. That's a clean tackle. I'm surprised he called that. He got caught out on some he, I guess shoddy he foot, ball work. He got caught out on some shoddy ball work. Yeah, Luciano got bailed out, man, big time. You know, he's a really good player, but he's another one that uh, I, I specifically remember – disliking watching him in the last uh the last conquer calf because he would like lose his mind a little bit and yeah. just kind of make poor decisions and as the game wears on his it, it, as his decisions stack up like they they progressively get worse i remember at one point him kicking the ball out of frustration towards our own goal out of bounds for a corner kick like we were all, all the way down on the other team's third and he got all pissed and just kicked the ball down the court and gave them a corner kick it's like why i don't know what his deal is that what was a horrendous a decision. Awful decision. That was a, also a pretty bad decision. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I mean, how many bad decisions are I we can't making? Diego came out on that. Again, wow. this spurns that transition, that breakaway just spurned from an absolutely horrendous decision for a shot that we're, they're trying to shoot the ball from the out, outfield. That's all they're trying to do. The movement's terrible. They're not seeing their, the, the consequences of the turnovers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I went to uh Rose city futsal and mm. I got training from, uh, Oh, I forgot his name is the Spanish guy. Uh, one, of, one of the big uppers in Spanish. I got trained in like real low level Spanish um, futsal federation training, whatever. Um, but the, 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 the absolute minutia he broke down on transition, it's comes from, it's literally seconds. Like when the ball turns oh, over yeah. the first second, the, the second second after the ball turns over it's so that type of like mentality, the transition game is so key to winning futsal and I think like the the U.S. is turning the ball over, and it, and they're in absolute shock. They're just like, what do we do? Standing at the back post. Yeah, it's it's a one v it's a one v one. It's a two v two. It's a it's a one v two. They're just waiting. <clears throat> Dominican Republic are just waiting for them to shoot the ball so they can counter. Well, because they know. I mean, what? It, with the exception of that goal, we've really not put anything of, of value on net. Nothing memorable for me, anyway. Did they take the score bug down? Or am I... Uh... They did take the score bug down. Huh. A lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of dribbling. It's interesting. 
the teams that look most impressive so far this tournament are the ones that are playing as a team. Like, sure, mm-hmm. there's been some individual play, and that's part of the beauty of futsal is you get this, you get both, right? You get these uh, absolutely beautiful individual efforts that lead to goals. Uh, but a lot of it is the teamwork and finding that backdoor pass and just like the, right. the dissection of a defense. The U.S. I don't think has really done that in either game so far. I don't think I can remember a time they really – they had a couple like three-pass combinations for a goal, I think, against Trinidad, maybe two of them. But this game, I mean, I'm really not seeing anything that is too exciting out of the United States. Mm-mm. Well, they're not going to get the turnover in the in the defensive press because it's, it's not there. They're sitting deep. Oh, caught them off there, but again, Andrade standing. He's completely marked. <laughs> Guys, if you're watching this and under, uh, understand, part of the reason I'm so frustrated is I am I am a rookie coach for an academy, and I can see what these guys are doing is wrong. Okay, and I know very little about the technical aspect of futsal from a a coaching perspective, but th- that play is a perfect example. Andrade. Although he's by himself on the camera side of the court, he is completely cut off by two Dominican defenders. In futsal, you don't have to be right on top of your your mark to to cut them off. It's about cutting off the passes through the middle, and the Dominican is doing that very well. And so you got to look and see where your teammate is and acknowledge quickly in, in your head, I'm not open. I need to move. Standing there on an island does not mean you're open. It's not outdoor. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I mean, look at the the absolute like basics dominance from Dominican. They're pulling their goalkeeper out with a two one lead. Yeah, their keeper's playing for fun right now. Yeah, they're only up by one goal. They don't feel like it, and it certainly doesn't look like it. They're not scared. They figured him out already. That's one of the things that killed Nicaragua last night too. In their play, was they played scared, and that's why they didn't win. No risks. No one even in the no one even in the penalty area. Horrible defense again. I don't think that US understands the transition and the, the absolute like immediacy of the need to get behind the ball. You've got to get behind the ball. And protecting the middle. Those crosses mm. shouldn't happen no. this often shouldn't be caught out that often that they can cross freely on the top of your arc the entire first half. And it's kind of, look at this. Andre just sitting there. If he would have crashed back post like he was supposed to, mm-hmm. he could have tapped that in before the keeper got there. That should have been 2-2. Two, two. It's Milton DeAndre Andrade from you, Utica I, City. I would really love to hear the candid thoughts of Moretti, a, a, a futsal goalkeeper. <laughs> He's got to be wondering why he did this. <laughs> you know, I, I want to talk be- to. I, I wonder if we could get an interview with Robert. I wonder I'm if he curious. speaks to us candidly. He probably can't. I think that's why we don't see a lot of the players we used to see. Yeah. Because I know a lot of them spoke up to the uh, soccer federation after uh, Dushan got fired. Mm -hmm. And I just can't help but notice that there's only three guys left. (laughs) Our conspiracy theories. I mean, yeah, could it be coincidence? Yeah, but there's not a lot that's coincidence in the politics of this kind of stuff. Look at your local clubs and academies and you don't, you can see that. What a goal. What a goal. How did he get that through? I thought it was inside netting. I did too at first, and then I saw it bouncing around inside the. Wow. The the again That's the defensive pressure, the defensive pressure too. He's like he's a he's two body widths off of him. Man. So here's a here's a here's a topic of discussion, and I'm going to be reveal my fanboyness. Do you think someone of the caliber of 
Uh, why did his name just leave me? Grand Rapids coach. Dick, who's the uh, Grand Rapids coach? Uh, Fabian. I'm sorry. Do you think Do you think Fabian has a has a has a better shout at being the national team coach than someone like uh, what's his name again? I always forget his name. Uh, say it one more time. I'm sorry, Luke. Do you think Fabian has a better shout at being the U.S. coach than uh, Humberto or whatever his name is? Oh, uh, then uh, then Hewerton. Hewerton. Whatever. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember his name. <laughs> Again, it's. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Fabian does enough politics. U.S. soccer is looking for somebody that's a yes man. They're not looking for somebody that actually wants to grow the sport. That's why we lost Dushan. Is he did something to grow the sport and he was punished for it. Yep. Fabian is the same way. He's not going to do what Dushan did because he's got more on his plate and uh, outside yeah. of outside of this. But plus, he's not going to get paid. He, yeah. I mean, there's no budget. I, I can't believe I, I heard Fabian actually applied for the job. I can't believe it. I don't know why anybody applied for this job. There's no money. It, and then CONCACAF pulls your funding for all the teams to come compete in this tournament. So you're basically doing this for a vacation. I mean, I, it, it's it's embarrassing that this is how U.S. treats futsal. We're one of the best sporting countries in the world, and we can't mm -hmm. support this sport? Like I, I said in the Discord the other day, there, there are colleges that have collegiate dodgeball teams in the United States. <laughs> how can we not support futsal here? That's infuriating. <laughs> Yeah, this is a legitimate sport that goes to a global contest, and we can get a better dodgeball league put together than we can for oh, football. Incredible! It's three one. Sorry, y'all. It's three one. <laughs> We've been ranting too much and not keeping I'm score. Fired up. <laughs> I, this is this is exactly what I thought would happen, and I'm still fired up. I, I thought, oh, I won't be upset if this happens because I know it's going. <laughs> Here I am anyway. Bardelli's been really good for the Dominican. He stood out to me this tournament. <laughs> I, that's also not the first time he's done that, that he's told players to get up. Nah, there's nothing in that. Yeah, not at all. See, these are the types of players I'm like, can we bring in a big, big time league, a futsal league in America and do something similar to what MLS has done and bring in some of these Dominican Republic players? Bring in some of the Guatemalan players, bring in some of the Costa Rican players. Well, and that... look at these, look at these rosters. If, it, if you guys have some downtime later, or if you want to look at it now while you're watching the game, I mean, the U.S. soccer on their roster has players listed as unattached that are playing for uh they, they play for futsal teams and they didn't bother to list the futsal teams they listed all the masl teams <laughs> and they listed two guys in italy yeah diego plays in italy he's listed unattached robert danmarin plays for a real futsal team granite semi-pro slash Upper amateur, I would say, uh, but still NFPL, futsal factory. You could put that in here. Yeah. I didn't. Why wasn't that put in here? It just goes to show there's there's no real interest in the United States to support the futsal. That's why I always say fans, us as fans, we have to be loud and we have to support it ourselves. Look how that's worked for England. They have no budget from the English FA, but English, uh, the English have put futsal people in charge of futsal, and it's growing and healthy anyway. Yep. We're not doing that. Nope. <sighs> US is just getting bullied off the ball by say, by by the Dominican Republic. We're falling down any challenge. They go down and then they hit on the transition. Yeah. Just getting bullied. And then there was like almost a full court shot. What idea is that? You know, it's, 
you know what is only funny because I'm so frustrated and I'm trying to like just find something to laugh about is <laughs> so these guys are professional arena soccer players that actually get paid a salary to play. Yep. And they can't that, play any better than the that, futsal players that are playing for free. And a lot of players in the N- NFPL that play for nothing, they play because they love it. And they do a better job of showcasing futsal than this. Oh, yeah, Diego's going to have that every time. Who's number five? Do you know on the roster? Uh, number five is Lu- uh, no. Number five is oh yeah, Luciano Gonzalez. Brother, that pullback and and just total flop is something I expect to see from my daughter's U twelve team. I'm sorry, it just it's, it's you can't excuse it. No. At this level, it's inexcusable. He almost created a goal single handedly by turning the ball over in mid court with absolute zero pressure doing some weird pullback behind your back thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. Cuba, no, played it. Uh, Michael, uh, Cuba plays later tonight. So that'll be it. Uh, the last game of the day is actually Cuba versus Nicaragua. They play at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And I'll be live for a watch party during that game as well. I'll be back on at 8 p.m. Eastern for the Canada versus Panama game. And then we're going to continue on through the Nicaragua-Cuba game. I don't know if we'll do anything else this afternoon. If Luke has time and wants to jump in, he's welcome to. But I know I'm unavailable until 8 p.m. So we'll cover as many games as we can. But uh, um, unfortunately, there's some real-life stuff going on for both of us. It's making it a little tough. But we'll get there. And then Chris brings up a good point. Look what Anderlecht did in Belgium. Bringing in international players to build a base, start an academy, build. 100%. Anderlecht plays so, so well. Mm -hmm. I'm a little... I was, it felt like a gut punch. I didn't make it to that semifinal. They were close uh, to make it back to the semifinal for uh, Champions League. And they certainly deserve to be in that echelon. Um, look at Riga Futsal in Latvia. I think that's another good example. They've brought players in from all over the world. Uh, they brought in Riccardino, uh, which even on the arguably the tail end of his career is playing at a, such a high level and is a mentor to so many players and kids. Uh, everywhere he goes, that's what he does because he just loves the sport so much. Uh, Dylan Vargas has gone there from Argentina. He won a trophy in Argentina with San Lorenzo before he went there. Uh, they've got a couple of really big Brazilian pivots, big, strong, muscular pivots, and they play really attractive futsal. Anderlecht has taken a similar approach to that where they've got this, this flair to them that's just really exciting to watch, and they're steamrolling the rest of the teams in the leagues over there because they've actually built it correctly. Uh, so, Chris, I agree with you 100%. It can be done. Unfortunately, we're, we're just at a point. We're just so far away. It's that chicken before the egg on the business side. We got to prove to investors that there's something here. But if I'm an investor and considering uh, supporting futsal or a league in futsal, and I'm watching this, I'm watching what the level of international team is, I'm not impressed. Like, I, this doesn't do it for me. I'd be questioning if Americans would want to come watch this level of play. I'm not sure that. They would. I, it's different when it's grassroots. Our NFPL teams are grassroots, and there's academies tied to them, so they personally know the players. Sorry, I'm still just in shock over the awful play. Like, just... <laughs> so, Huge Chris, letdown. Chris, to your point, yes. I, I 100% believe... Uh, it's possible, but what I, here's, here's my kind of like interjection into this conversation is um, you have to have a soccer federation that believes in the program. Once you do that, it, we're not reinventing the wheel and we don't even right. need to build I, your last statement. We do not need to build. It's there. We have us uh, youth futsal building a, a whole crew of kids and has been building them. The thing is, is once they reach a certain age, it fizzles out. There's we literally, at, we at 12 years old is all we have to build for on from 12 years old and up, give them some decent stuff to do. Uh, I, I, and I honestly believe a professional league and you have like maybe three years worth of building and you're ready for the next world cup cycle. And I think you're going to be turn, turning out some 
Thomas Pendecas. Like, I mean, look at uh, look at Texas. You know what I mean? Look what Texas is churning out with uh, yeah. what's that name of that club? I just lost me. All uh, Stars is a big one out there. What's the one that Thomas came from? Uh, um, uh, I, I, I think forgot. he was with All Stars. I think it's but like, he was playing in France when he was. Uh, yeah. But I'm talking about the academy out of out of Texas that was that big academy, that huge one. Anyway, I'm just saying it's already yeah. there. It's already there. You just need U.S. to pick up the other side of it and do what they did for MLS and and supercharge a league. And I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna siphon off indoor players. You're gonna you're gonna start pooling from the youth futsal uh, academy or that's already there. It's all over the U.S. Well, and it's pretty clear that even the extended national team who is supposed to represent futsal is not particularly interested in its growth. And it's because they have too much on their plate. There's what, 11 extended national teams, if you count both the men's and women's sides. And when you see that um, like wheelchair soccer does better than futsal and gets more attention than futsal, I mean, those guys deserve a platform. I'm not saying that, but, but Futsal is the only sport that they're in charge of that could actually develop outdoor players and beach soccer players and and support everybody else the same way that it can support itself. It, it's the only it's the only uh, iteration of soccer I think that can actually support other niches of soccer as well as the big beautiful game, and we just do nothing to support it. Wow, that was lucky. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Luck or not. MASL is protect. You know what else I think too, Chris, though, is MASL has been around forever. I mean, they've, uh, there's been a form of an arena soccer league since the seventies and futsal is so new here. So we're already behind the eight ball because we're competing with another version of indoor soccer. So I think that's a big part of it too. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I think MASL is a little bit protected, I think, but I also think they have a, a fan base they've cultivated over decades that, that naturally protects them as well from something like us trying to, uh, jumpstart something. So I think it's, I think it's two pronged on that. But as we're watching a, a futsal tournament, here's your MSL. The, product. Here's your MASL product. Here it is. Here yeah, it is. Right. What and do you I'll say it again? These guys all get paid to play indoor soccer and they can't keep up with guys that are playing for little to no wage in places like England. And like two of these guys on the, uh, England has got a very comparable scene to us. I think they're slightly ahead of us with some of the things they're doing. But um, when you take a look at the couple of players, uh, the goalkeepers, for example, for the Dominican, they're, they're in a similar situation to our NFPL as far as funding and, and wage and stuff and, and or lack thereof. And they're showing out way, 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 way better. I mean, light years ahead. I, I think the U.S. is putting on the court. I think, you know, Nothing, no, no hate to MASL. Do your thing. It's a, it's a free country. It's a, it's a capitalistic market. And if you can, if you can make money doing it, I'm fine. But what, what you're seeing here is indoor soccer is not, is not futsal. It's Mm -hmm. not even close. It's not. And the thing is, is, is it entertaining? That's a different question. Is it, is it as skilled as futsal? No, no. You you have to be a better player to play futsal, and that's that's the facts. And I'm I'll 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 rest on that one. I'll throw that one up. Um, so honestly, you're gonna get better players that maybe transition to the U.S. soccer team. I, I you know uh, Jake and I disagree there on true futsal and soccer, but I don't care as long as I get some futsal and it and it goes both ways because I think it will it will go futsal players to soccer soccer players to futsal like maybe you just didn't quite cut it in soccer you can come on over and I I I have no animosity towards that but honestly indoor soccer is a poor 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 version of soccer it is and you're it's being it's being set on display right here extended as a service to the community futsal isn't a service I agree Chris yeah yeah A hundred percent, Chris. I agree. You know, futsal has been roped in with the same governance as beach beach soccer, uh, as the the wheelchair. I, th- I think they call it Paralympic soccer, right? Um, uh, CP CP soccer, 
uh, all, all these like little variations of stuff that uh, lines up more with U.S. soccer's Adapt and Thrive initiative than it actually does with growing anything. Um, you know, it's more kumbaya than it is, hey, let's let's put a good product on the on the court for right. a futsal tournament, an international futsal tournament. And I mean, look at look at the Dominican roster. You got two guys playing in England. You've got a guy playing in Colombia. You've got one, two, three players playing in Italy. One, two, three, four players playing in Spain. You got a player in France. These are all places where the game is taken seriously. And it shows on the court because they're playing head and shoulders above what the United States is doing right now. Yep. Yep. Let's and like take a look at age here. They're actually quite a bit older. 88. I think uh, as an average. There's a few 88s in there. A lot of mid-90s. In the U.S. Well, I guess about the same. Yeah. I got. I haven't. I mean, I just, you, first time I had a chance to take a look at these rosters. Actually, we could we could share this out. So you, when you look at Ventura look. Junior. He's one of our regulars. He's a true futsal guy. He was born in '85, so he's pushing. He's pushing forty. Let me share this out so people can take a look with us. Diego is. Uh, Can you guys see that right? Let me know if you guys can see that okay. So let's take a look. 42. Diego is 42 years old. He's still really. I mean, he's still really good. Okay, so Robert Dameron, unattached. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. I, th- I wonder if it's because NFPL is technically an amateur league. If that's, if that's why still they list it. I mean – all the all the teams in Unattached England are. looks so unprofessional. On Un, all the teams in England are. Yeah, I think this is a. I think this isn't a faux pas. This is not a faux pas on Concacaf. This is a faux pas on the U.S. team who listed this. I, I guarantee this is what U.S. handed over. And I yeah, think this Concacaf is a. Isn't editing this, they're just uploading it. They're not. This is a. Into- this is a backhand from. Uh, Whatever. I can't, why don't I remember? Never remember his name. The head coach. I'm sure Hewitt, I'm saying his name wrong, but Hewitton. Hewitton. This is a backhand. He's an indoor guy. Yeah, it's not his MASL guys. So who cares? Yeah. He's listed the two. He's listed two of the guys that play in Italy. They're actual futsal clubs. That's it. And that's just to make it look like we have guys playing internationally. <laughs> the reason that's there. Pampino Futsal in Italy. I'm so bummed Italy does not stream their their futsal games anymore. Oh, I know. I'd love to catch some more of that. Where's Moretti? Why am I not he's uh, third from the bottom. That's and he's well. listed as unattached? Is he not playing? That's what I'm wondering now. It's like He has to be, right? Oh. So before the last cycle, Diego didn't even know that he could uh, that he qualified to play for the U.S. He didn't even know he had the that his citizenship qualified him to be. I mean, he's born and raised in in Italy. Yeah, I think he has a, a father from the military. Uh, oh, he's a military yeah, brat. Like, yeah, um, but I mean, he all he knows is Italy, and so he had no clue that was even an option. And then Dushan found him. <laughs> I remember right. So, okay, so. Again, Dushan putting in work. Okay, so we have Utica, Outlaws, Utica, Ambush, Outlaws, Outlaws, Outlaws. We really pulled that many players off the Outlaws team? Are they that good? On the futsal, apparently. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your mic was on, just in case you didn't know. Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> we have no shame here. Don't worry. I'm so fired up. This 
is this is a weak moment for me, guys. You're going to see me kind of raw. It's rough. I mean, the play is horrible. The play from the U.S. is absolutely atrocious. They're they're on the ground ninety percent of the time, taking hits on what they think is a foul, and it's not. It's not. It, they're, they're they're it's weak, and it's and I watch. I'm watching their pivo. Their pivo, strong player, right? Someone up top knocking around. It's on the ground. He's on the ground. How can you not hold up the ball, right? I mean, it's just mind-boggling to me. You have um, Gonzalez, I think his name was, number five, trying to do pullbacks at midcourt and getting the ball sniped off of him. Like, yeah. you can't do that. You, I mean, you should football tackle that guy before you let him get by you if you're turning the ball over at midcourt. Take the yellow card. Own up to what you did. NF- DP NFDP. NFDP. Yeah, so uh, Chris, that is the reason that the coaching staff changed. Actually, was because of NFDP. Oh, so, um, they sick it indoors was indoors well. Who uh, Dr. Who are you talking about? Was he talking about outlaws? I don't know who. Who are you talking about? I'm trying yeah, to bring I actually up. Have here, Chris. Check this out. I've got uh, actually got a little pin, a little pennant from uh, NFDP. That I keep here in the basement in my man cave uh, from 2023, which is the last last year of that program's existence. Um, okay, so here we are. Texas Outlaws. Games played, 24. Wins, 11. Losses, 12. You're pulling teams off of a losing squad that sits fourth yeah, in the Western Conference? Why? Why why are you pulling the most 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 of your players from a below average team in the Western Conference? If you were Outlaws, seriously you are, pull, yeah. you're, you're, you should pull from the soccers, pull from the savage. Well, you're probably gonna be get most of the Mexican players there. Um I mean Utica's two in the in the East, and that makes sense. You know, I just yeah, they, I, so I noticed uh I got I got recommended I think because I follow so much futsal stuff and so they're referencing it in their post right now Utica City is is uh, Hurton had to make a statement as well like because he's he's leaving Utica in the middle of a playoff push to come coach the national team so so the Utica City fans are a little frustrated as well through all this process just yeah. probably just as frustrated as we feel with the product we're getting on this side is the guys doing double duty and it, it's like well, you're gonna leave us in the semifinals yeah. To go coach some other sport. So, like, so he had to like give a he had to like post a, a thing about I have the utmost confidence and the rest of the coaching staff blah 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 you know the usual uh, political political statement. Um, this just doesn't and I, and again, Dushan was a hundred percent bought in drinking the Kool Aid, quit his day job to grow this team and make it right. Right, and he got fired for it. Yeah. He got fired for finding a way to get himself paid and also support his real job. How stupid. So uh, a DR, you know, I, I don't know if you were here for my, my comments is that, okay, they are sick at indoor. Uh, okay. And, and I, I'll, I'll let you have that. Sure. Fine. But in the context, do you mean they suck at indoor. Or do they what suck at indoor? Or Since they're so far down the, <laughs> oh, so did, you mean, the table. did you mean suck it indoor okay if you meant suck then we're not we, we don't need to have that conversation you're right <laughs> <laughs> oh man how how are you bringing them here's here's what I, here's what my thought is okay so i'll i'll skip that um i'm honestly my honest opinion is everyone that was good said no no, I won't play for you. So look at, um, remember yesterday we were talking to, I think her name was Bethany in the chat. Yes. It said, we were asking why Zach wasn't in the team, Zach Regett, and I guess he was invited and turned it down. Sure. So then that brings up the question. So did guys like Jeremy Klippall have a look and he turned it down? Or was he ostracized as a part of the old group and they decided that, that you know, here to need to make his own team? I mean, there's so much speculation around that that, no one will ever have the answer to. You kind of got to know the people personally to hear those little bits and pieces. But uh, Dushan was building, but threatened the status quo. 
You know what's crazy about that, Chris, is I, I know more than I'm supposed to about that, and I've kept really, really quiet for that reason. Um, but he approached all of the youth uh, organizations in the country to get them to partner with him on this program, and they refused to do it or, or ghosted him and wouldn't give him an answer. And so when no one would jump in with him when he offered, he said, well, fine, I still got to do it and did it. You know, I, the, and the guys that got him fired were the ones that he approached to try and help. Yep. Diego, no, the game's not over. It's halftime right now. We're just uh, we're just venting until uh, <laughs> until we get back to this second half. Uh, U.S. is only down by one, but uh, a lot of that is pretty lucky, uh, in my opinion. I think that they've doubled uh, that make goal. Yeah, that's lucky. Th- that Luciano goal uh, through traffic. It was a good skipping ball, but I think lucky. Um, Dominican had a couple sitters that they didn't take advantage of as well. Um, I mean, I, this game could easily be 6-2 in favor of the Dominican, in my mind, going into mm-hmm. halftime. And, and So we've had a couple of lucky breaks, and uh, we've got a lot to clean up. We look like crap. Yeah, we really, really do. Um, having said that, I kind of was thinking, you know, we, we've been ranting a bit, but, it, you know, what are, your, what are your thoughts in the chat? Like, what are you thinking? What what do you think we look like? Are, are, are you completely in disagreement with us? Are you in yeah. agreement that's with okay. us? that's okay. Yeah, we're we're okay with hearing counter arguments. Yeah, this isn't one of those places where we're gonna like ban you for disagreeing with us or something like that. It's, <laughs> it's not that way here. We <laughs> no. th- this channel is built to be a platform for people to kind of discuss futsal and to enjoy futsal and, and and even brainstorm. I'm real big on that too. Like it, I would love to do um, a little bit of a pipe dream. And and Luke and I almost got it off the ground this year. Uh, and we still, I still might be able to figure something out. But I would love to run some kind of tournament in the name of this channel and invite some uh, teams from different leagues in the United States and kind of put on a showcase. Um, I have the facility to do it, and I think I could pull it off. It's just a matter of some personal life stuff that's gone wrong in the last two years that's kept me from from investing that time. But uh, I think that it could be done. So maybe as the channel grows a little bit, we could get some more eyes on that. That's something we do in the future. A little more support from you guys as a community if you'd like to kind of be a part of the decision making on that. I think that'd be really cool. It's if the community could build something together and then present it and prove that we can do this. Um, But I'm all about collaboration, learning from you guys. I I do not claim to be the expert in futsal. I'm just the only one that was willing to sit in front of a camera and and say things about it. So, uh, (laughs) so I I want you guys to chime in and and if you got a way to educate me on this, that that Luke and I are missing, then let us know. Oh, we're back. All right. All right, let's see what we do. What do you guys think we need to do to get back in this game? What what needs to change for you guys? Gotta it's a be. yellow card. I think Lopez is lucky it wasn't. That's so. It's really late. That's really late and really sloppy. Oh, yeah, the-, the commentators are saying now too. He's lucky he wasn't shown a yellow. <laughs> I agree, a hundred percent. That was ugly. This could be dangerous. Moretti's experience there. I mean, to see, I think he saw, so I don't know if you guys caught that whole play, but the guy that ran and faked the first shot, then runs in near post and then sidesteps back post. Moretti sees him shift for that back post and steps forward and cuts him off and makes that save. Otherwise, that's a tap in back post. Yep. Very smart. It's just that's just decades of experience from already knowing to step forward on that. Very smart futsal goalkeeping there. Seeing glimmers of some good ideas here from US. Looking like they have a little bit of a different game plan going coming into the second half. Yeah, whatever the plan was last half, they got to change it. That wasn't working. <laughs> no. 
we got to do something different because Dominican Republic had us pretty well pegged right off the rip. They did their, they clearly did their homework. Oh, I do like this to you. I will say that um, he impressed me yesterday too. Big, strong presence at the Bevo. Able to make that turn. I mean, he plays a good Pivo, but I just don't think Pivo is the answer in this tournament for any of the teams. I just well, think and he, if you got a big, strong Pivo like that, you're always have to run off of him, right? Yeah. Like they're, they're passing and stopping. Yeah. If you got a guy that big and strong that can hold off a fixo and then dump it back to you and you take the rip, why not? Yeah. Oh, Diego Torres shoelace. <laughs> Looks like Robert's coming in for a little bit. Good save. Your traffic. Robbie and goal. Robbie, Robbie D. Damn Ron. <laughs> Damn Ron. <laughs> uh, have we been saying his name wrong for years or is, uh, hey, I don't know. is that the commentator for Cocker Cam? We'll take it. I'm going to start calling him Damn Ron. Cool thing is, is uh, I, I feel just as confident with Robert in between the pipes there as Diego while he fixes that shoe. I mean, we got a nice deep uh, goalkeeper uh, uh, bench there with Robert, in my opinion. Why do we have two players in the same spot? Just confusion at times. Just utter confusion. Like that. That's a good idea there. Yeah, like that's the first time I think I've seen like a one touch pass, like a one touch instead of like dribbling around, like some one touch stuff, popping it around the uh, around the court, trying to catch them on that transition. Oh, that's another one of those instances where, uh, ah, well, that's it for Robert. <laughs> you say he played. Good game, Robert. Yeah. Good game. Did some, uh, did some toe taps. <laughs> I think that might've been fortunate. We also don't incorporate our goalkeeper a lot. You notice that? No. No, we don't. Especially with a, a, the, a goalie at the caliber of uh, a Moretti and Dameron. Yeah, Robert plays. Uh, Robert will fly for uh, Futsal Factory. Yeah. He's not afraid to get up out of that arc. Just, you don't, that, I'm not saying they should do it because this team is obviously timid you got to be you might have to consider it at some point in this half though too but to play play a fly goalie uh just in the run of play for funsies and just because you need you want to change it up <laughs> that takes a confident team oh for sure and we're not there they're shaky at just half field yeah look at this i mean i just don't like the idea dominican they, just has such a relaxed low press right now they're not feeling any pressure and Turn. they're sitting back, inviting the press, and the U.S. isn't hardly putting any on. So he does his job as a pivo, gets the ball in front of the net. Guy falls off by about three feet, and he, he reaches back and then passes the ball back instead of turning and firing the ball. Just the lack of awareness of what's going on when you receive the ball. Yeah. It's like your job as a pivo is if you can get that turn, you do it. Part of the problem too, so like I said, the Dominican Republic sitting in the low press, they're not playing with a lot of defense with a lot of urgency. They're kind of just sitting back. Ooh, did he take that to the face? Yeah, he took it straight to the face. 
and the U.S. is not doing anything to like make any diagonal runs or to try and open up that middle or try and break up that diamond. I mean, it's just not very creative. They're all just sitting on the outside waiting, uh, just waiting. Mm -hmm. No sense of, oh, God, okay, geez. <laughs> all right, well, when they get the right side of his face back uh, from the left side of his face and they get him sorted out here, we'll have a kick in. And, uh, holy <laughs> crap. Slow-mo makes, makes everything look worse, but that looked bad. <sighs> Why are we shooting from almost half court? Why? Again, this is stuff you can do in indoor. You can shoot from deep. The goal is big. And you can't do that here. Well, and then when you miss like that, it hits a board and comes back to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like That's the other thing. It's like these guys are just taking wild shots because in arena soccer, they're not punished for it. There's yeah. no there's no punishment for a wild shot in indoor because the ball bounces right back into play. Whereas here, you have to think about and have thoughtful decisions. You don't have to have thoughtful decisions in arena soccer. Yeah, you just it's just full throttle. Dominican Republic does not care at all. No, they are chilling. Well, and they know all they have to do is wait for a counter, and they'll catch us out. Yep. That's the other thing, too. It's like, uh, why should they care? Goalie's out. Just a confident Dominican team. There it is. What did, what did I just say? Counterattack. Nobody came back. I mean, Diego is one person. Our Pivo... I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know if our Allah on that side was just trying to eat up the middle, but he didn't do a good job of doing it. And that's because I see why the people slid across for that, but I just, I don't know. I don't know I enough mean, about the strategy to, to comment on that one, I guess. But, but the reality was that the rest of our guys are jogging or walking. As soon as you see that keeper fly, you better very well be on your sprint mode. Because what they're trying to do is overload, and they are going to try and hit you with an overload somewhere. So you better go go back and protect your goal, and ride out the ride out the uh, the flying keeper. The announcer, if you guys are watching the game, he got the name wrong on the keeper. That's actually Demar, uh, Demar Blanco, I believe is his name, and he plays for Bloomsbury. He's the one that played for Helvetia um, before they folded. Still a lot of time in this. If the U.S. can figure it out or have a change of strategy, they could they could stay in this game, or if or if even if the Dominican just has a couple of uh, lapses in judgment, all of a sudden it's their game. I just have no confidence. Gonzalez quitting on the on the play. This is what he did last last cycle in the last Concacaf. Is he just quits on plays? I wonder if Otto's at this game. <laughs> Heckling from the stands. He was, well, he was at the Nicaragua game. I got a picture from the, I got a video from the stands last night. Nice. Uh, and he got to at least enjoy one of the games. Um, I'm sure that he's with the team getting the hate. Oh, good fake. Good fake. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez Louise, man. I don't. I'm usually not this bitter and negative, guys. I apologize. I need to clean it up a little bit. Huh. <laughs> now I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, I just think it's funny. He's just like, look at how bad it is. And there's like a little, a little, a little bit of love you. tap. Look, they're flying their keeper. They're up to, they're flying their keeper. They do not. Care. Confidence. Again, nobody on that guy. Yeah, he ran from half court, never stopped running. And nobody looked up and noticed him coming through. 
Yeah, watch the defensive set from US. It's just absolutely atrocious. Swiss cheese. Oh, we're running a little bit of a ooh, some movement. Oh, Almost came off. To make him probably like, hey, they're moving. But hey, <laughs> they did a passing play and actually played some freaking futsal. <laughs> and it led to a shot. Like, this is what we need. Look at DR. They do not care. No. No, they're feeling good. I heard the commentators yesterday calling this group the group of death. But um I got a I got a feeling everybody expected the US would play a little better than they have so far. For me, they've been unimpressive. Look at this. What's the call there? I wonder. I don't know. Strange. I was wondering why they gave up. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Hands oh, on hips gracious. from US. Yeah, they look gassed already. It's not even halfway through the second half. Bad look. It looks bad. The body language is everything. These guys oh, yeah, are look playing at... like they're down by six. Yep. They feel like they look at them. They look it. A yellow card. Oh, a yellow card. I didn't what see it. There? I had no clue. Was it a bad substitution? Is that why they were pointing at the bench? Maybe. You guys don't know in futsal if you do a bad substitution in the on the off the bench, it's a yellow card. So, uh, if you guys see those hash marks on the sideline in front of each bench, you have to you have to sub through those, almost as if there was a uh, like a hockey bench, like an arena soccer setup. Uh, you have to come through those gates, and the player that is subbing off has to be completely off the court before uh, the player subbing in can go on. And if you don't, it results in a yellow card. It's no questions asked. No, the yellow like card. There's a yellow coming for Dominican on that one. I've actually been liking what I'm seeing from Ortiz and uh, Mendez. Uh, I've seen a little bit of movement in life from them uh, this half. Yeah, they definitely look like they're, they're they're certainly not giving up. They're still playing with the same energy they did in the first half. Right. But the movements, they're at least try, yeah, they're trying to move. They're trying to move. Yeah, I agree. I just don't agree with the guy plugged up at top. Uh, Tay Tayu. I don't agree. I don't agree with it. I don't have like Zach in this, uh, in this lineup shows. Zach was a great offensive presence for us, uh, in the tournament in Umag a couple of years ago, uh, as well as in the CONCACAF tournament. And he had some good looks during the world cup, just couldn't get anything in the net, but it, it shows not having him. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we don't have a deeper line of players behind, see, that's what, that's what I would like to see is him mm -hmm. dish it back and, yeah, and block the steal. keeper's vision. There we go. Oh. That was probably the best uh, passage of play from U.S. all game. Yeah, and, and to recover off of that first shot attempt as well. Like a Teyu's dump back for the first shot I liked a lot. That's what I want to see from a big guy like that. Right. Uh, and then the follow-up in the passing, like you said, to create that opportunity was much better than what we've seen so far. We still have over 10 minutes. Plenty of time. I, uh, I've shared this with folks. I don't think I've made it public, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Is uh, this, this U.S. team could make it out of the group, even if they, uh, even if they lose or tie this game. Um, but they will not make it past quarterfinals for me. They will not represent at the World Cup. What a stud. Wow. Moretti is so good. Moretti is so good. What an absolute monster. It was a handball, but whatever. 
It's always so tough. It's on the opposite side of his body from the ref. Mm -hmm. I mean, his arm was definitely up. You could see his hand behind his head, but. So that passage of play I just commented on. Well, uh, actually, the transition to defense as well was good. It was two. It was it was an offensive set and a defensive set that were really actually quite good from US. We'll see if they can put something together. I mean, man, a half and a quarter and a half and a half for you to wake up. I mean, that's not you got to do better. Yeah, that's why I don't think they'll make it out of a quarter, even if they make it out of the group. Is I mean, you cannot. I mean, Dominicans proved it for us, right? I mean, they're not going to wait. They're going to continue yeah. to play. Mm -hmm. And they're going to play at a high level from uh, kickoff. And the U.S. for some reason needs uh, 30 minutes to warm up before they start playing any futsal. And I just don't I don't understand that. But, and then we're in our keepers. Oh. Hey, just look back at him. He's like, dude, get out of my way. It's just they're making they're – making, DR look like per like absolute pros. Oh yeah. I haven't kept up on the score. Sorry guys, it's five. <laughs> We're in serious trouble now. We re we read the mind of the commentator, Jake. Yeah, no kidding. We've uh, we've done that a couple times now. It actually kind of helps validate what I'm saying. I feel a little bit better saying it publicly. <laughs> he, he's not he's not he's not railing as hard as we are, but man, he probably is thinking it. Oh, he's got to be thinking like, who are these guys? What are we? Why are we sitting on the ball? This is a goal. Oh. If he wouldn't have waited, I bet if he would have taken that shot right off the rip or passed it right away. Look at the DR team. The DR team was recovered and sat in front of goal before the U.S. even got their offense going. And they just took, sent two players up on offense. Oh, man. Horrific. It's bad. No, There's no conviction. There's no sense of urgency. <laughs> so I, I know that uh, I've, I've been very negative this stream, and I, I do want to clear something up. Diego do, or uh, Hewerton does have uh, what's all background. Sure. So... I, I'm certain that he can coach the tactics that are necessary. Um, so that's not to take away from his resume. Uh, Sasha Filippi, who's the uh, assistant coach for the U.S. right now, same thing. He's got a ton of experience. I just don't think that grabbing guys that have pursued arena soccer for the last several years and putting them on a court with one, uh, or excuse me, two training camps prior to this tournament is a recipe for success. It's not. It's just not. Uh, um, and and I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll do you one better, Jake. I don't, I don't care. I will. I will call him out. It's not good enough. It's you should know enough. better. As a coach, you should know better. As someone called in to lead the national team, you should know better. It's all. It's on him. It's one hundred percent on him. I don't care. I, the guy could be. The guy could be. You know, the Albert Einstein of futsal. And if he does this, it's still on him. You're. Not, you're only as good as your last match. If, well, you, and, yeah. if you can't do the job, you can't do the job. I, I'm I'm unapologetic. I'll, I'll rip him. Like he, this guy has no business coaching U.S. football. None. I mean, you got to know to be able to put the right players together, and that means getting futsal players. And we mm -hmm. had such a crop of young guys that actually play the game, attractive <laughs> futsal, quality futsal. If you would have taken that group of uh, youngsters that we took to Umag, Croatia, and put them on the court, they would have performed better in this game than the current. Roster. Oh, yeah. Look at us standing. Look at us standing.
What a shitty pass. <laughs> oh, my God. I... No, go back and watch the replay. You, We're in a power play, and you literally have everyone standing still on the outside of the goal. Everyone. Watch. Look at them. They're standing. We've They're clearly just... never practiced this. They're We've standing. They're never practiced moving. moving. Look at the movement. Look at the shift. When you're the extra player on the, on the touchline, you're back and forth, back and forth, in and out, in and out, trying to be the extra man. Good Lord. Yeah, when I... The commentator just said he didn't expect the U.S. to pull Moretti this early. I, I didn't either, to be honest. Like We needed a change in strategy. I'm just surprised that it was, okay, let's throw everything at it. I really like that Mendez kid. I just don't think he, he needs more people around him. Or or uh, put into a futsal system. Right. Support him. Yeah. So we've, yeah, this, I don't think this come, I just got a text message. Uh, sorry, guys, I've been looking down at my phone a lot. I've been talking to some people while You're this good. is going on that aren't in the stream as well with us because uh, they don't have two stream, you know, two screens to be able to watch the stream and chat with us. But I am getting some text messages along the way. And uh, one, our friend Darius on the channel mentioned that uh, this commentator, I don't think understands what flying the keeper is because he's done a, not really explained it very, ooh, again, Mendez. The only sign of life. The only sign of life. Jeez. He's like the only, he's the only one that really wants to do anything. My Lord. What an absolute shocker of a performance. No cutters. Yeah, nobody making the right. The guy on the back post is standing there. There we go. There's a sign of life. You know, uh, to your point, Luke, uh, with Tayu, I know you mentioned that you're not as impressed with him. Um, his play is the same every time. Stand yeah. up on the ball, cut, shoot. Like yeah. a hard cut and shot. I'm really surprised that the Dominican Republic let that ball go by because it has been the exact same play from him every single time he's touched the ball with inside of the arc, with the exception of the one time he rolled it back and I gave him praise for rolling it back to an olive for a shot instead. Um, thankful for it. He scored a couple times doing it uh, this tournament, but uh, it, it's just very – and it and – it, highlights an issue we have across the court very one-dimensional play in the see i think States. i think that's more I, I i don't think i'm i'm calling into question frank Tayu. um I, i'm sure he's a, a strategy an accomplished, behind it. You, yeah I'm, i think i'm sure he's an accomplished uh uh pivo but what i'm what i think is that's the only thing we tried all game long that's the only thing we tried that's it kick the ball to him hope he scores it was literally that strategy the whole game and it still is. Yeah. And it didn't work. And to me, yeah. like the definition of insanity <laughs> is trying something over and over and over and again and getting the same result and thinking it's going to be different. Right. You, 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 know, he, it's, you know what's funny about that too, Luke? So we, we fly a goalkeeper and run the exact same play with an extra man. Zero change <laughs> in strategy, except, oh, now our goalkeeper's out of the goal. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like that is look now DR's flying the goalkeeper. What is this game? <laughs> you know what they're doing? You know what this is? They're 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 preparing for the quarterfinal. Yeah. That's how confident they feel. Because now they're preparing for the quarterfinal. Hey, not... If we get in this position as the US is in the quarterfinal, what do we do? 
better they work are on not flying scared. the keeper. They are not scared no. of us at all. That's good. Cut, 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 cut. Lopez is flat footed. Doing cut. nothing. How'd you not see yourself become wide open? <laughs> How this Lucky. Hey, that, Lucky. Kid, that kid deserves something from it. this game. Yeah, he does. I'll take the lucky goals. I, I a couple of we've had a few freebies from the Dominican. That might keep us in it. I like the fire in that kid. I like him. He's trying to, and he's trying to get everybody else on his level. You see how he's, you know, yelling at the other guys after the goal, trying to get them hyped. But I mean, the energy level from the rest of the team is just poo. <laughs> just awful. absolute poo. Just awful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I agree. Mendez. Uh, the shining light for the U.S. Right. What What is the purpose of number seven? I don't know who he is. What's his purpose? Who's number seven? Diego not, Barato, unattached. I don't understand him. He's contributed zero to this team. That was a good – that was an actual good play. That was better, though. That was better. Better. Lopez was on the back post like he should be. He was ready that time. Yes. A little too cute with the shot, but I, good connection. I'm not angry with that. Oh, you better boy. save that. Now, he's going to cross his own goal. Oh. Woo. <laughs> I think the rest of Dominicans, like, surely he's not going to do this. <laughs> so they just didn't cut it off. His passing is soft. Yeah. No Look, conviction. right here. This, like, we are stacked way too deep in our own side. Like, we are not pushing hard enough to make this fifth attacker. Uh, yeah. Like, I, it, it, there's no sting in this. There's, there's no, no advantage at all. There's no advantage to the fifth attacker. None. Got some antics going on here. <laughs> I love the run with the ball antics and then throw it back to him. <laughs> That's one thing I've never understood about futsal players is they play like the clock is still running. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm that Dominican keeper, I don't care how long he keeps that ball, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, the fifth attacker is null here. So this is just how I like to do a fifth attacker, but... I, I prefer to see the fifth attacker play as uh, a second Pivo, not as a second Fixo. I know there's, there's, a, there's 100 ways to skin the cat, but. Are they giving it to him? I think it's a corner. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's That would be so. soft. That would be a soft PK. I think the way this game's going, uh, as a referee, I don't think you can give that one. No way. I mean, that hit his upper arm. It's not like it was flailing out there. It was mostly tucked in. Mm -hmm. Definitely ball to, ball to arm. Eh, yeah, I don't know. The ball acted the same as if it hit his chest or his arm. Yeah, I agree. Whoa! Again. Come on now. Lopez again, or Mendez again. Wow. Mendez to NFPL. Hurry. Hurry, hurry. Help us. <laughs> He single-handedly put them back in this game. Single-handedly. And it's not like he's been doing some one-two plays. He's shooting. That's it. That this kid is why you can't sleep on football. This is why you can't sleep on a lead. That complacency of uh of the, the Dominican sitting back kind of costing them. They're not uh Oh. oh man, if he scored that back, <laughs> I might have got up and walked away if he would have put that in. <laughs> I love the idea, though. I love the. I love the. I don't uh, think he wanted the goal. I think he thought that his teammate was already up because that was like way off. He wasn't centered on goal at all with that.
I love futsal because it can change over this short amount of see, time. This is where I like to see my fifth attacker at. He just ran back post, and now he's rotating to that opposite corner. Right. That's where I, that's where I like to see. The movement of the fifth attacker. But he's got to track back. You better move. You better move. He's... Luciano drives me crazy. He's got the most amount of talent with the least amount of like effort in this team. Like He could be so much better. He's standing... Next to the opposing team's arc is their goalkeeper is getting ready to distribute it down the court. <laughs> Man. What's extra infuriating is he's a football player. He should know better. Give Mendez the ball. Give Mendez the ball. Look at him work. Everyone else is standing. Mendez is the only one trying to make something happen. Running yeah, around the court. Moving. Like all he's got to do is down the court once and hit it. Ugh. No, 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 no. Well, who who is that? That's Gio's little cannon he likes to shoot. Yeah, can we get a counter up? <laughs> can we get a counter up for how many times we've scored? Can we not lay down and ask for a foul when there's clearly nothing wrong? Oh, jeez. You guys are in momentum. Don't don't try and play that card. You're right killing now. your own momentum. Exactly. Yeah. That that was uh, when we were watching a little bit of the NFPL stream off to the side yesterday, guys. As we were catching the evening games, that was my thing with uh, Santa Fe. Is they have these. Uh, Santa Fe is an extremely good team, and I like I like cheering for them and following for them. They're one of my favorite teams in the NFPL. But they got a bad habit of wanting to clear their bench and make mountains out of molehills, and they kill the momentum of the game, and it hurts them more than it hurts their opponents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're kind of seeing this now. Like, uh, get up, get moving. If you're hurting, limp off to the side. You guys have the momentum. Mendez is on fire right now. Get yeah. it on his hot foot. Right. Guys get scored three goals. Don't take all this thing out of your attack. I agree with Teo. I agree with Teo back in. Yeah, he's holding up that middle. He's created a lot of off-the-ball opportunities. He's creating those shooting lanes for Mendez just by standing there and, and muscling off uh, the shape of the, of the defenders here when it counts. Boy, he's got to move the ball quicker. Yeah, and look at how much space down the corner. Mm -hmm. Off the post. Ooh. Why not back there? I mean, Lopez has played well up top there as well, but he's gonna he's gonna get charged for paint. He's chipped the crossbar so many times. He's on. He is super unlucky. He didn't score that. Yeah. I need to know what why this guy plays. Why stop there? Look how much space the Dominican Republic is giving us to continue to dribble, and we right. stop. We completely kill our momentum. We've allowed them to set. Mm -hmm. Continue to press. We had our fifth attacker in place too. Yeah. Ooh. No, I don't know. If you have a fifth attacker and you're gonna you're gonna bite on that shot, mm -mm. not smart. Kind of surprised the Dominicans stepped forward on that uh, to pressure that. There was not really much reason to. But that's what you're looking for when you have your fifth attacker out, right? You're looking for them to get impatient and to, mm -hmm. to try and take the bait. But we're not doing quite enough to encourage more of that from them. Not open. I don't know what Gonzalez is pointing at. He's not open there. The passing lanes are gone. He should have looked down the line or or play it back like he did or sooner. Sprint. Sprint. Yeah, yeah just the casualness. And with a minute 20 left, people jogging around the court. Put someone other than Luciano in that shirt. He doesn't he, care. He's already yeah. checked out. Yep. Get him out of there. 
Dude, See that defense three. right there, hands on, up in them. Why? Where was that all game? These guys, man, this is rough. Few shining lights in this team. Hopefully for the future, maybe under different leadership. I don't know, but holy crap! Now, now the Dominicans high pressing right because they don't want Gonzalez back on. Mm -hmm. They know if they do that, they can keep Gonzalez off the court. Smart. And now they sit back. Look how quickly they set in defense. Okay, the fifth attacker's on. Let's set back. They set back before the fifth attacker even gets what? a hold of the ball. Go ahead. Just pass it Game. in. Yep. Game over. Game over. And Luciano again is jogging. Oh, my gosh. We only have ourselves to blame. Just an absolutely awful pass. You have to see the lanes are all gone. You got to dribble. They didn't, he had no pressure. He didn't have to pass. There was no pressure. He didn't even have to pass that. The Dominican Republic were just sitting in front of their goal. Wow, they got one back. <laughs> wow, that was a great play. That's the only good touch that Again, stuff that's like happening. Guy on the back post. Yeah, basic football is basket. getting us goals. Shoot to the back post. Hurt. Do something, foul something. Great defensive effort there. Wow. And, ooh. Hey, killed a lot of time doing that, though. Sparato guy's been down four freaking times. <laughs> and he's talking to the referee from the floor every single time. Like, he's not hurt. Keep it moving. Nope. It. Huge win for Dominican. Huge win. Huge, Great huge win. win. They, and they absolutely deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. 100%. Well played. Man, the U.S. has a lack of creativity in both games. Well, uh, there's a lack of effort from a lot of the players. Like this is, uh, for me... U.S. has done this tournament. They're done. They got Guatemala next. Guatemala is not going to let you back into a game once they get ahead. Look at what they did to Trinidad today. Yes, they had a bad first half, mm -hmm. but they turned around in the second half and just locked things down and outscored Trinidad 5-1 to one in the second half. If, if, if Guatemala shows up the way they normally do tomorrow, uh, U.S. is going to get absolutely cooked. They're going to get shellacked. For me, they were never going to win that game in the first place. When I was looking ahead at this schedule, I figured they would finish 2-1, and one, wrap up second place, and maybe move on to the quarters as a best-case scenario. But uh, And look at Luciano now clowning. He's got himself to blame, mm -hmm. and now he's trying to start fights after a loss. Mm -hmm. He is an absolute clown. I lost so much respect for him in this game. You know, He'd already had some antics I didn't like before. And now he's like, that's just a lack of character. Embarrassing. You have yourself to blame for that loss. Jogging mm -hmm. back, lack of effort. You're the futsal player on the team. You know better. Yep. He made some critical mistakes in this game that were just inexcusable. Inexcusable. Horrible giveaways. I mean, he, 
He must have thought the U.S. was wearing their white kits today, the way he was passing. Dude, and it was, it was just embarrassing. It was really bad. Giveaways at midcourt leading to huge turnovers. I mean, everyone knows you take care of the ball at midfield. You take care of the ball. You make your mistakes up front so you have a chance in transition. This, is, this was just so, so bad. U.S. flopping on almost everything. A minimal, minimal defense. Uh, Dominican just barely giving them any sort of opposition and the ball would turn over. Just minimal. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Massive lack of creativity. Massive lack of uh, character today, with the exception of Mendez and Lopez for me. And, of yeah. course, Diego being a, a, a stalwart. Uh, absolute unit for us uh, for four years now, three years. Uh, those were the only shining lights for me. I mean, I, I'm looking through the list uh, to try and jog my memory here. Tayu had some good moments. I don't think it's, I, I'm with you. I, I don't think it's a, a, his fault the way that our style of play is. I don't think it's complimenting him well enough. No, you have but, to have, you have to have great players around you to play that big man. Creative, yeah, he just creative players. Support to play that way. Yeah. They all stood there. They all they literally passed the ball up front to the pivot and stood there and said, "Okay, score now." And when he has zero options, he gets shut down. But when he does have options, he has the option to turn and shoot because he has the options running off. So, I mean, for me, the the this US team where were you the whole game? And you play you played pretty good at the end. When you when you when you felt the heat, for me this team, why didn't this team show up for the for the first half for the sec for the first half of the second half? They were yeah. literally just passing the ball around, thinking oh, it's okay, we got this. And you yeah. don't got this. How, how no. did you not see the, the? How did you not see the writing on the wall? How did you not feel the heat of uh, the Dominican literally not caring what you did and disrespecting you? by pulling the goalie in the lead and just playing with you. I just don't see how uh, what what the assessment was from Hewerton. The the assessment was poor. The the tactics were poor. Yeah. The the motivation was poor, the preparation was poor. The squad selection was poor. It's just poor all around. I mean, from from the US playing a team like the Dominican Republic, you should get a result. 100% you should get a result. 100%. I agree the whole way through. The Dominican looked like the better team from kickoff. Yeah. And it, it U.S., again, comes out super timid, takes a half and a half, takes two-thirds of the game to warm up. I mean, just, just awful. Awful play, uninspired. Lack of character. I mean, I keep saying it. I, I, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It, it was. It, it looked bad from the start for the United States. I mean, right off the rip, just looked like garbage. Like they didn't want to be there. Like they're there for a vacation in Nicaragua instead of playing some futsal with their with their country's colors on their chest. Yeah. I mean, this is this is horrendous. So I don't. Let me ask you this: Is this a coaching issue or is this a player issue? Is this a player pool issue? Uh, I. I, you want me I, to go first? I'll go first. I'll go first because oh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you something to chew on because I know you have your answer already. <laughs> yeah, I asked that. I, that was premeditated. Um, <laughs> I 100% lay this at the door of or at the foot of uh, Hewerton. I 100% put it there. You took – hold on. I, I, I want to speak correctly. Let me speak correctly. Let me pull up the – no, no, no. I want the um, – Whatever, I'll, 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 I'll speak incorrectly. You took half the squad from the Outlaws, who was a below average indoor soccer team. You, pull, you pulled from one of, the, one of the worst teams in MASL. Okay, they're getting paid. Fine. That's okay. Okay, they play indoor. Whatever. But obviously, we're seeing the transition of skill from indoor to futsal. That, that's it. You saw it. That, that's the evidence you need. That's his decision. That's Hewerton's decision. The, the other decision is 
tactics. Obviously, the players are not going to go out there and just do whatever they want. They were coached this way. They were coached to say, here, you stand here, you stand here, wait for your turn, and pass the ball to a big person in the middle. That is a Hewerton decision, 100% through and through. That is his fault. Uh, he pulled from Utica. Whatever, you know him, fine. They yeah. obviously didn't cut it. They're, they're not good. They're not good. Your team, whatever you put, put, put together, whatever you thought was good is not good. You need to go back to the drawing board. And here's the problem, Jake. Look up YouTube. Watch a video. Watch some top level because that is not what top level futsal looks like. That's not even close to resembling modern futsal. That is just, uh, how do you not do it? How do you not put a squad together and inspire them and at least go out and try and play something halfway decent, halfway this century? You know, that, that like you said, it's, it's, it brings so, it smacks so much of Tozer era. It's not yeah. even funny. No. And I just, I, I, you, you can't hire an indoor coach. I don't care what background he has. He's obviously brought to the table his best tools, and these are them. And if these are them, it's not good enough. For me, uh, I, I think it's a coaching problem. If you can't will these guys on to represent your country, even if they're out, even, even if the talent level doesn't match the rest of the tournament, talent is one thing, work ethic is another. And there's clearly no heart in this team to put forth higher work ethic in this tournament. So many guys standing around, you know, and, and just a lack of creativity from a coaching perspective for me too. I, I know we've had some Utica city people jump in and out of the chat the last couple of days. I, I know you guys have kind of found me through, uh, you know, your coach being involved in futsal, but I got to tell you, I, I don't see what the hype's about with, uh, with Moriera. Um, very one-dimensional coaching so far this tournament. We're not changing things to change our change our uh, results. You know, even when we threw out our our fifth attacker for the majority of the second half, it was the exact same strategy with just an extra guy standing up there. That's not how you utilize a fifth attacker in futsal. I don't know how that works in arena soccer for you guys. Maybe it works, but it doesn't work here. And it's clear that the arena soccer style of play is is shining through with these guys because it's just wild shots at goal. Hey, that. By that that glass, that plexiglass is not there to save you anymore. You are playing on a futsal court now, son. Like that mm -hmm. ball goes out in the stands when you miss. The, you lose the ball. And another thing, you got a guy like Luciano who this isn't the first time we've seen antics from him. He's one of he could be one of the best players on the team. His his technical ability is there, um, and we've seen it, but he uses it as he wants to. He uses it when it's convenient for him. And when he decides to have a hissy fit, he's useless. And he proved that as he was our fifth attacker today. He was a massive liability throughout the game. Then we make him the fifth attacker. So he's he's a liability even more because we can't get even get him to freaking run back to the bench to sub out for our goalkeeper on counterattacks. He's jogging from across the court. That's absurd. Like, it's one thing when you give up goals when you're on the fifth attacker because that means you're literally throwing everything at the game. You're literally throwing everything at the offense. So it, it is a high-risk, high-reward. But... When you can't even sprint back or at least give me an 80% run back, like even that would upset me to watch. But at least then I see, hey, this guy's maybe gassed and that's why he's not coming back as fast. But that was a light jog. He gave up. Luciano and the other guys on that team gave up the minute they were down two goals. Lopez did not. Mendez did not. Moretti did not. Those guys kept us in that game. Those guys kept us alive. I I'd say Frank did as well too. Teyu did as well. You know, when he was out there, Again, I, to me, I agree with Luke. I think that the, the things that weren't working for Teyu in this game were not his fault. I think it was that there's nobody working with him around him when he's out there on the court. And when he was out there with Mendez or Lopez, then suddenly things were opening up. He created opportunities for Mendez just by being that physical presence in the middle of the arc and creating those shooting lanes. And uh, But when the other guys were on the court, he was alone up there. He was alone up top, standing on the ball, this big, muscular, strong figure with a sharp turn and able to quickly turn on a ball with that kind of body physique is impressive, but there's no one to help him with the, with the deflections. No one's on the back post for him. Nobody's running lanes off of him. Like everybody was just there just to say they were in Nicaragua in April. Pathetic. I am unimpressed with the U S national team. This is embarrassing. Shouldn't, uh, these guys shouldn't have gone. If they're not that interested, they shouldn't have gone. 
No. Go play. Go play. You know, I know the Texas Outlaws don't have any MASL uh, playoffs to to stay and play in, <laughs> but like go stay home and enjoy your arena soccer leagues playoffs. Then if you don't want to represent the country <laughs> in futsal for us, the people that actually care about futsal embarrassing. So here's the thing. Is there a, is there a indoor soccer world cup? No, no. Okay. So now that we've got that fact out of the way, is there a futsal world cup? Yes. Yes, there is. Now, what does that tell you? What we've proved, and if you if you do not agree that we've proved this, and, and, I mean, feel free to you know post it in chat, is that people who play indoor are worse players than futsal players. They cannot play futsal. And FIFA says so too, because they don't have an indoor World Cup. Yep. So They have not sanctioned the indoor game. The arena so game. Here's, the th- here's the thing. It's just indoor soccer is not getting it done. It is, it is not getting it done on the coaching level. It is not getting it done on the player level. It is not getting it done. Like you brought, just brought up on heart level players that are jogging around with the, with the red, white, and blue on their chest at minimum. And this is a conversation I have with my 12 year old daughter. It does not take talent to hustle. Right. It doesn't take talent to hustle. It doesn't take talent to have heart. It doesn't have take talent to to try your best. And right. when you when you've been selected to represent your nation in front of the world, and that's the performance you put on, shame on you. Yeah. Shame on you. It, at that point, hey, today, put our NFPL All Stars out there. Put our unpaid amateur players out I'd there. I'd rather see if, it. If the arena soccer players don't want to be there, then send them home. Yeah. Screw them. Yeah. Goodness gracious. I mean, that I, is just absolutely embarrassing. It's, it's clear that this is just a step on the resume for these arena soccer guys because they don't care. Mm-hmm. Hey, no one's going to watch me do this. I'll just go home, say I was a national team player. I'll charge a little extra at my training camps this summer because these parents will think, won't know any better, and, and I'll benefit there. I don't care that I'm – I don't care, actually, while I'm on the court. This yeah. isn't my game. That's what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. I, I would rather watch NFPL players all day. I would rather yeah. I would have rather watched the uh, Colorado versus Santa Fe last night all day long. As players like they 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 acted like they won the World Cup at the end of that game. Yeah, they yeah. cared. It they're matters not, to them. They're not getting paid. They probably got a burrito at the end of the game. That's <laughs> they it. got a free meal. Yeah, and they're gonna jump in their Camry and drive home. Yeah, they're gonna drive themselves home afterwards. Yep. Absolutely. It's just, it's just mind boggling. You've gotten paid to go to Nicaragua and represent your country. And this is the effort level we got it. it to me, it's, it's inexcusable. Uh, Hewerton, it, it, it needs to be called on the rug as soon yeah. as possible. This is a massive, massive failure. Yeah. Massive failure. Yesterday for me was unimpressive as well. And it just so happened. We won, we played a worse team. So we won. And then today you get a little bit of pushback and you can't handle the pressure. No. And they invited you back into the game. That's the only reason the scoreline was that close is you were invited back into the game. Dominican Republic were clearly changing their tactics and practicing other strategies for the rest of this tournament. They kept mixing it up, even though they didn't have to, what was working for them, they didn't have to change, but they did it anyway to prepare for the rest of the tournament. They are clearly looking ahead with the level of confidence and the level of swagger, knowing that they are better than the U S and should make it out of that group. That's what I read between the lines from watching their style of play. Right. Meanwhile, the U S doesn't even know they're there. Yep. I, I, those guys didn't even know they were in Nicaragua. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's just, it, it, it it's frustrating. Hopefully tomorrow's game is better. Um, it's at 2 PM Eastern time. So I won't be available to stream with you guys for that last USA game, but it's against Guatemala. You probably don't want to hear me on a microphone. For that <laughs> um, so uh, for the rest of the day, Suriname is playing Costa Rica. Um, that's probably going to be ugly for Suriname, if I had to guess. Uh, Costa Rica looks as strong as ever. Uh, they had a very impressive outing against Haiti um, and had scored eight goals in basically a half because that game ended with only a minute and a half into the second half. Speaking of Haiti, it looks like they're at least healthy enough to start a game against Mexico, so they will be playing at 6 p.m. Eastern time against Mexico, both teams looking for their first results. Uh, And then Canada faces Panama 
at eight. I think that's going to be a really good game. I'm really excited about that game. Uh, I don't even know who to pick to win that, to be honest with you. I was really impressed with Canada yesterday. They uh, played at a much higher level than I anticipated, but I still expected them to do well this tournament, but still playing at a higher level than even I thought. And then Nicaragua rounds out the night again, uh, as they did last night against Cuba. Um, Luke, do you plan on streaming any more today? Uh, I don't know. I need to go check in with family, but if I do, uh, definitely hit you guys up and you know look out for that. Okay. Yeah. So guys, just keep an eye on the channel. Uh, Luke, you know, even if you want to leave this up till you know, for sure, uh, if you want to watch the next game, you're welcome to, and keep watching with the fans here. Yeah. Uh, guys, I will be back for the 8 PM Eastern game. So there is a, uh, a, a pre-made scheduled stream for that. If you guys want to turn on notifications for it, uh, I will be much more neutral. So I'll probably much more fun to watch the games with than I was for this <laughs> USA game. But, uh, uh, and then we're going to go till the end of the night. I think last night we wrapped up right around uh, quarter to midnight or something like that. Uh, and I plan to do that again, even though it's a work night, because I just love you guys so much and I love the game so much. So, uh, and then looking ahead to tomorrow, I will again be watching the 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. games. So same four teams that have been playing the way that CONCACAF did these schedules is a little bit lazy. It's the same group playing in the same time slots every single day. Uh, but I still want to catch football and, and chat with you guys. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so we'll just have to cheer for our friends up north or something. I don't know. But uh, uh, and we've had some guests come in from uh, fans of other countries as well. So we'll enjoy their enjoy their company. So with that, guys, I'm going to step away. Keep an eye on the stream or keep an eye on for, for Luke if he uh, jumps back in here during the afternoon games. Otherwise, I'll see you this evening. Thanks a lot for joining us. All right. Yeah.